Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Master. In this video, we are going to discuss about the IS code 1893-2016, which is specifically meant for earthquake resistant structures. So in that, today we are going to discuss about the load combinations. When we analyze and design the structure, the major part is the loads, because with that loads only, we are going to arrive the forces due to that externally applied load. What are all the internal loads developed in the structure? So that we will find out and then we will design the structure accordingly. So loads are very important factors as well as the load combinations. So we will be applying different types of loads for example dead load, light load, earthquake load, wind load, snow load and so on. So according to these loads we need to combine them and then we need to find out the forces. So in that way load combinations are also an important factor. So in this video let's discuss about the load combinations and what are all the load combinations we need to consider as per IS 1893-2016. So without delay let's begin now. So in IS 1893-2016 class number 6.3 is specifically for load combination. It is given as the load combination shall be considered as specified in respective standards due to all load Load effect mentioned therein. In addition, those specified in this standard shall be applicable, which includes earthquake effects. Which means in IS 456 2000 will be having the specific load cases. So, in addition to that, we need to consider the earthquake effect as well. Even when load combinations do not contain earthquake effects, indicate larger demands that combinations including them, the provision shall be adopted related to design, ductile detailing, and construction relevant for earthquake earthquake conditions which are given in the standard IS13920 and IS800. First let's look into the load combinations as per IS456-2000. So here we have the load combinations and partial safety factors. Case 1 is dead load plus live load. The partial safety factor is 1.5. So here it is mentioned as imposed load that indicates the live load. Case 2 is 1.5 times dead load plus earthquake load. So here it is given as wind load since we are talking about IS 1893-2016 so here I have considered as earthquake load. So either earthquake load or wind load we need to consider over here. Case 3 is 1.2 times dead load plus live load plus earthquake load. And then case 4 is 0.9 times dead load here it is given plus 1.5 times earthquake load. So these are the major 4 cases of load combinations which we need to consider as per IS 456-2000. Now let's see how do we get these kind of combinations on what basis we are getting here 1.2 and 0.9 so we know the partial safety factor is 1.5 as per is code but these two cases how we are getting that we will discuss now case one is 1.5 times dead load plus live load that means structure is built and occupied so structure the frame of the structure is the dead load of the structure so that is built and occupied so we need to consider dead load and light load the factor is 1.5 next case 2 is 1.5 times dead load plus earthquake load under what conditions we need to consider this one structure is fully built and not occupied plus environmental action so structure is fully built means the dead load will come and then not occupied so so the live load will not come over here since the structure is not occupied and we need to consider the environmental actions that is earthquake load either earthquake load or wind load we need to consider next case is 1.2 times dead load plus live load plus earthquake load so here structure is built and occupied plus environmental actions so all three cases we need to consider so structure is built in the sense like we need to consider the dead load and occupied we need to consider the live load plus environmental actions so earthquake load we need to consider so in this you may get a doubt like here we are considering the factor of safety that is uh, partial safety factor as 1.5 and here we are taking as 1.2 since we have three loads over here, we need to consider 80% of it. 80% of 1.5 dead load plus 1.5 live load and 1.5 earthquake load we need to consider. So that becomes 1.2. The common factor as 1.2. Next case 4.9 dead load plus 1.5 earthquake load. So in this case the structure partially built and we need to consider the environmental condition that is earthquake load. So here 
there will not be infills no flooring no finishes that means the frame of the structure is partially built it is not completed fully so in that case we need to reduce the dead load the structure is not occupied so we are not supposed to consider the live load and then only environmental load we need to consider so because of that we we are going to take the dead load as 60% of this one 60% of 1.5 times dead load so that comes 0.9 dead load and the environmental load eq load earthquake load we need to consider fully 1.5 times earthquake load in this four combinations four set of combinations we will be having the positive and negative directions in case of earthquake load and also in case of wind load so both of these lateral load will be having the two sets of combination that is positive direction and negative direction and if you take this case two in this you will be having four load combinations because the directions will be two directions x direction and y direction so positive x negative x positive y negative y so in this you will be getting four load combinations similarly in this also you will be getting four load combinations and in this combination also you will be getting four combinations so these are all the reason behind the load combinations the set of load combinations how do we consider the factors so these four set of load combinations we need to consider the same is given in is 1893 2016 but there are some other different conditions let's look into it in class number 6.3.2 design horizontal earthquake load is given when the lateral load resisting elements are oriented along two mutually orthogonal horizontal directions so this we need to consider the elements are oriented along two mutually orthogonal horizontal direction then the structure shall be designed for fx due to full design earthquake load in one horizontal direction at a time and not in both directions simultaneously so if the resisting elements are oriented along two mutually orthogonal directions then we need to consider the earthquake load in one horizontal direction at a time not in both directions simultaneously that means either in the x direction or in the y directions we need to consider not the both directions simultaneously here it is given as when lateral load resisting elements are not oriented along mutually actually orthogonal horizontal directions structure shall be designed for simultaneous effects due to full design earthquake load in one horizontal direction plus 30% of design earthquake load along the other horizontal direction thus the structure should be designed for the following sets of combinations of earthquake effects so here if the structure is not oriented along mutually orthogonal horizontal direction then we need to consider the full design earthquake load in one horizontal direction plus 30% of design earthquake load along the other horizontal direction so that is what given here elx that means earthquake load in x direction plus or minus 0.3 that is 30% of el full load on one direction plus 30% of load on the other direction so in this way we need to consider the load combination if the structure is not oriented along mutually orthogonal horizontal direction so in this we have two sets of load combination plus or minus elx plus or minus 0.3 ely and then plus or minus 0.3 elx plus or minus ely let's see what is two mutually orthogonal directions of the lateral load resisting elements consider this structure it is having two direction x and y these two directions are mutually orthogonal that means this is a regular structure it is having the 90 degree orthogonality so if the structure is irregular like this kind of shape or this kind of shape if the structure is irregular and the two directions are not mutually orthogonal in that case we need to use the different set of load combinations as mentioned in is 1893 2016 so in that case we need to consider earthquake load in one direction that is full earthquake load in one direction plus 30% of earthquake load in other direction so that is what given in the is 1893 2016 so here x and y are two orthogonal horizontal plan directions thus earthquake load in load combinations given in 6.3.1 shall be replaced by elx plus or minus 0.3 ely 
are ELY plus or minus 0.3 LX. Hence, the set of load combinations to be considered shall be as given below. So, as we have discussed before, there are three set of load combinations which include the earthquake load. So, here instead of earthquake load, 1.2 times dead load plus live load plus earthquake load. So, here we need to replace this one ELX plus 0.3 ELY, and then again there is another combination. ELY plus or minus 0.3 ELX. So, in one, one case, we will be having two sets. And similarly, 1.5 times dead load plus 1.5 times earthquake load. In that case also, we will be having this one. We need to replace the earthquake load by this term. And similarly, we have another set of combination. And the last one is 0.9 dead load plus or minus 1.5 times ELX plus or minus 0.3 ELY and one more combination. Just we are replacing the EQX, that earthquake load by this term because of the non-orthogonality of the structure. So this is considering only two directions. Let's see, then we need to consider all three directions of the load. Fx due to Vertical earthquake shaking shall be considered when any of the following conditions apply. So we have discussed about the combinations only for the horizontal directions. Now we need to consider the vertical direction as well having some conditions. So when we need to consider vertical earthquake effects when the structure is located in seismic zone 4 or 5. Structure has vertical or plan irregularity. Structure is rested on soft soil, bridges structure has long spans or structure has large horizontal overhangs of structural members or subsystems. So, in these conditions, we need to consider the vertical earthquake effects as well. So, here it is given as where both horizontal and vertical seismic forces are taken into account, load combination specified in 6.3.4 shall be considered. So, here combinations to account for three directional earthquake ground shaking. When responses from the three earthquake components are to be considered, the responses due to each component may be combined using the assumption that when the maximum response from one component occurs, the response from the other two components are 30% of each of their maximum. So, all the possible combinations of three components including variations in sign shall be considered. Thus, the structure should be designed for the following set of load combinations. So, ELX plus 0.3 ELY plus ELZ. So, here you have to consider plus or minus. Similarly, next one is Y term and then rest other two directions are 30%. Next one is Z term other two directions are 30 percent. So, here x and y are orthogonal plan directions and z is the vertical direction. So, as we have seen before the EL in the above uh, referred load combination shall be replaced by this one. So, we have set of combinations over here right. So, in this set the instead of EL here we have only two directions but we need to consider all the three directions like this. See dead load plus live load plus or minus ELX plus or minus 0.3 ELY plus or minus 0.3 ELZ. So, in this way, we have to consider the vertical load combinations as well for all the three set of load combinations. So, friends, I hope you all like this video. Please do comment in the comment box. Your comments are always welcome and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.